is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hello, welcome back to a brand new year of the uh, Bristol Flyers podcast, proudly sponsored by Web Gains. I'm Joel Osborne. He is Sam Hardy. Sorry we're a little bit late. Uh, our Christmas break has gone on a little bit longer than usual, hasn't it, Sam? I, this is normally the time that we're shouting Happy New Year. How was your Christmas? But Joel, this, what is we on the 18th right now? We're a little <laughs> bit late, mate. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to come back. We we're supposed to only take a single week off between Christmas and New Year after our Christmas special, which of course Sam missed that one as well. I, I, I was there as Buddy the Elf. <laughs> oh yeah, of course you were. Yeah, you were on a Christmas holidays, weren't you? How yeah. was it? Uh, I don't. I don't want to really. Christmas is so far away now. A lot it has was. happened since then. So yeah, so so much has happened since then. We've got a jam-packed episode uh, for you uh, this week. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed their time off. Fist of festivities, if you managed to get some time off. Um, yeah, as we say, producer Dan's over there pushing the buttons, as always, back for a brand new year. Dan, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm good. It's nice to have you guys back. I've been pacing the studio on my own for weeks now, waiting for you to return. Dan so. doesn't get a Christmas break. He just lives in here, Joel. You know that. Yeah, literally. I know. You just live I, in I here. I do basically live here. Yeah. Was, so, Chris, was Christmas all right in the studio? It was all right. Yeah, I didn't get a tree up in here or anything. So it was just me sat here opening my one present to myself. So no, all good. What'd all you good. get? Uh, an orange. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Chris Single. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Um, before we introduce our guest this week, we've got, say, we've got a jam packed episode um, to get through this week. Of course, the festive period did see the departure of CJ Jackson. We have to give a shout out to CJ Jackson. Of course, his uh, short term spell with the Flyers coming to an end. Of course, uh, Sam, we only had him on the podcast a few weeks ago, but great to see that his time in Bristol has helped him secure that move uh, over to BC Previsda in Slovakia for the rest of the season. Hey, didn't he have. He had had a 26 point game recently he did he, he's got off to a flyer as some would say his uh, his time in slovakia is 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 doing great i think he's played a couple of games so far i think he had a, a 20 plus point game in maybe his opener or his second game I had a chance to properly check it but uh yeah cj shout out to you cj because nothing but a true professional helping us out during a really tough time for the club over the festive period enabling us to, to you know boost those numbers and um yeah, it's great Great to see him uh, smashing it uh, at his new club as well. Uh, but of course, with CJ's departure over the Christmas period, um, it did bring the arrival of a very familiar face back to the Flyers. And we are very pleased to say that joining us here in the studio is that familiar face in none other than Bristol Flyers forward Levi Bradley. <laughs> I appreciate y'all having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, boy. How are you doing, Levi? It's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You yeah. coming back to the Flyers? Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, happy for it, though. Yeah. yeah. How's it feel to be back in Bristol again? Because I imagine it's quite familiar um, s- s- um, familiar surroundings for you now. Yeah. Honestly, it feels like I'm, I don't want to say coming back home. That's kind of cliche, but... But it is home, it really, is, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, was this your first pro year out? So when when you could join four years ago? Literally, I got a college Capulis, Yeah. Yeah. So no. So his first spell was with the Flyers. Of course, you don't. No, no. You, that's what I'm saying. Out of college, was that yeah. the first? That was my first. That was your first year, pro year. Yeah. That's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Straight out, of, straight out of college into the Flyers. Um, and um, we, I mean, we appreciate you coming down here to chop it up with us uh, on the podcast because, uh, of course, we didn't have the podcast last time you were down here, did we? No, you didn't. I just, I just said that to you. This is actually crazy. I still don't kind of believe it, but... No, this is mad. Yeah, like here we it. are. A little, a little, uh, a little product of the COVID lockdown. This was, wasn't it? We started off on Zoom, and then it sort of slowly grew, and now we're here with producer Dan in the studio. We're still pinching ourselves, to be fair, mate. It's not, it's not real, is it, Joel? No, it's not. Um, Levi, just, I mean, I think this signing of you coming back to the Flyers was a bit of a surprise for everyone. Uh, it's a surprise for me when I found out uh, that you were coming back to the team. Um, just kind of talk us through how the whole thing came about from your point of view, because this, ha- I mean, we we said this last time we had CJ come to the club. It happened really quickly. This one, I think it could have been the quickest one yet, right? Yeah, no, this, I, honestly, I want to say in a span of five days, not even, no, four, four or five days, I was basically packing my bags and headed to Chicago to get here. Wow. 
so, yeah. so you came from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, then to Chicago, That's true, and yeah. then straight from Chicago to Bristol, and now here you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is super quick, isn't it? Well, so were you already having conversations, or did Coach just give you a random phone call and was like, "Hey, how about it? What happened?" <laughs> uh, no, my um, so my agent like asked me on Wednesday. Yeah, he asked me on like a Wednesday, like, um, "How would you feel about going back to Bristol?" I kind of just thought about it for a second. Like, of course I'd go back there. Like, yeah. He was like, all right, well, uh, I just had a real good talk with the coach. Um, I'll talk to you, like, later. Like, okay. Yeah. The next day I got a text from him saying, hey, Coach K is going to call you. All right. Talk to Coach K. We just caught up, really, uh, just checking on, checking in on each other. Uh, the next day, talked to my agent again. Um and he was like, yeah, like, they might sign you. Sure enough, Coach K called me. Hey, uh, like, we want you to come back. Like, how soon can you get here? <laughs> Pack your bags. Come now. We think, need you. I think that was, like, December 31st, something wow. like that. Yeah. So then he told me that, uh, and they tried to buy me a flight for, like, New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. Like to just get out here and i was like i don't know if i can make it that quick so i, I was out here a day after that the second and the rest is history there we that go so <laughs> we, we had a text from mike Edkins, um team manager to what well, came into steve and was like you need to get what number are you 42 42 yeah get number 42 ready and then he said something along the lines of um Bradley Jr., right? Yeah, but yeah, Jr. Yeah. wasn't what you had here four years ago, did you? No, I didn't. But, well, but that's the point is when he texts, we, he didn't say we have Levi coming back. He was just like, get number 42, get Bradley <laughs> Jr. on the, or Bradley on the back or whatever. And we were just then like, hang on, what's the Levi number 42? <laughs> and we, we were trying to piece it all together. And then when we saw it, we were like, yeah, boy. So uh, yeah. yeah, that was a really exciting time. Yeah, it's great. I imagine it's a lot easier for you to settle in now uh, back into the club in the second spell because Definitely. you already know the coaching staff, you already know the backroom staff. you got Rafael Thomas Edwards, someone you're very familiar with from your yeah. first time round with the club. Um, just talk us through the adjustment of how you settled into Bristol so far. Uh, so then pretty good. Um, pretty nicely. Uh, TJ is my flatmate, as you guys would say. Nice. Uh, but it was, it was, honestly, it was easy. Um, like I said, uh, I think the hardest part, honestly, was just the flying. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, in terms of like settling in, you haven't really had too much <coughs> practice time. I, I, I wouldn't imagine because you came in at a really busy schedule for the team. I think you had like three games that first week or Literally, something like that. I and think then we had one practice. Yeah. Like those three games, something like that. One or two. Yeah. One or two practices, but we didn't even have our full team. So we couldn't play five on five. We're not really, we're not really doing much. We're really preparing for the game. So. Coach Kapoulis and the guys really did a good job of just trying to get me acclimated. Just, all right, yeah, Levi, here are all our plays for the game. <laughs> <laughs> and go, go, go nuts. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, we got two practices. Just just go out there and just try and do it good. Don't don't worry about messing up. Yeah, and and, and you um, actually, so you said that you arrived like the day after New Year's Day, mm -hmm. and then um, it got to game day, actually. Here's a funny story for you, Sam. Well, the Leicester game. Got, we played Leicester in the, uh, the trophy. On the, the, the sixth, that was, wasn't That's it? right, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, we're about to play that game, and Levi's registration hadn't come through yet from the BBF. I didn't, even, I didn't think I was playing at all, So to be honest. I didn't. So, so yeah, I think I you did. were told, right? You were told to, like, bring your, bring your shoes, yeah, um, yeah. come on the bus, see what happens. If we get your registration in time, you'll probably get some minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and it got late, didn't it, Levi? Yeah, I think he told me, like, 3 or 4 p.m., something like that. Yeah. Like, Oh, Levi, by the way, your registration coming through. You're playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, so you're you must already be in. Wait, it was a home game. It was no, it was away. It was, no, it was away. You so, must have so, been on the road already. So, so yeah. we were on the. So we actually got the email through when we were at the service station just outside of Leicester. It was me, Michael, Andreas. We were at the Costa or the Starbucks, I think it was. Yeah. And then the email came through and it just said, like, um, all sorted. So I mean, basically, means you play tonight. And then and he came to the back of the bus, spoke to Levi, and says, Yep, it's all come through. You're playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It yeah, was super quick, yeah, wasn't literally. it? Well, you, you were hoping to play though, right? Surely. Yeah, I wanted to play, but I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna go through just because. I don't know. Coach seemed kind of unsure. Like I don't know if you're gonna play. Just make sure you're ready. All right, I'll make sure I'm ready. Do yeah. Do they do their best, Joel? I've not had much experience with it. Do they go? We are gonna try our best to register these players. When we signed Teddy Oki Rafor, he came. Uh, with that registration came through to the very last minute as well. 
So um, it came through <laughs> just before tip off, and he managed to play. But the, but they're trying to get it done. They're oh not, yeah, yeah. They're not like comes through. Yeah. yeah. There's a few things you have to require. You have to have require the clearance from your previous club. Yeah. Um, you had so Levi previously played in Cyprus. Yeah, I was in Cyprus, and but they it actually had. To, I was in the Dominican Republic right after that too. Ah, okay. So you had to get a sign off from the team in Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were waiting on. Uh, they thought it was Cyprus, but I was only in the DR for about three weeks, something like that. Ah, time. right. I came home for Christmas break, and that's where they needed to get the clearance from. Yeah. Oh, so they were then like, oh, we've done the wrong one. We need to like, okay. Yeah, so you have to get the clearance from the previous team, and then you have to register them with BBF, and it gets, uh, it's a few steps. I mean, Mike is the king of organizations, so he's on top of it all the time. Shout out, Mike. Yeah. he. I've not met anyone as more organized as Mike Higgins. (laughs) I keep thinking you're going to say the wrong thing. What is the BBF? What does that sound for? British Basketball (laughs) Federation. Right, nice, nice, nice. Because I keep thinking you're going to say the the, the three letters you're not allowed to say, Joe, and I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) We're back for a new year, but the rule stays in place. Uh, But yeah, there we go. Um, Levi, just talk us through, um, because a lot of fans will remember you from your first spell with the Flyers. It was the 2019-20 season. Um, You were part of the team that went to the British Basketball League Cup final in Birmingham. Of course, the Flyers making their very first major final. And then um, a few weeks later, um, the whole country shut down because of the pandemic. And we've basically gone through a whole global pandemic since the last time we really <laughs> spoke to you properly. Literally. It was... Um, no, that was, that's crazy now that you say that like that. We had a game against... Uh, it was Glasgow Rocks at the time. Do you remember that one? Yeah, so we I had against my friend. Dante so, Thorpe was on that team. And no one knew... I mean, we all, most of the sports in the country had shut down by then. And we were probably one of the last sports that were still playing at that point. I, I remember being on the balcony being like, it's, it was the weekend. Um, this is one, you know, conspiracies will come through. It was the weekend that was the races in Cheltenham. Yeah. And I was like, that's why Boris wants to keep the country open. Because he wants to go have fun with his little um, horsey <laughs> friends. Um, but we were on the balcony like, we shouldn't be playing this game. We just yeah. shouldn't. We shouldn't. We, I remember chatting to you and like a few others like, just shouldn't be doing it. This is mental. Yeah. You're all out there playing. Um, I don't know if you won or lost. I can't remember that one. Oh, I think we lost that we game. Were, we definitely lost. Glasgow was good that year. They were. They, they, were, they, they were top I, of the league. They should have won were. the league title. Do you remember? Oh, they, yeah, because <laughs> you started trolling them on social media. Do you remember they said they should have won the championship and they should have uh, been crowned champions after the league got made null and void at the but end? But they probably should have, right? Well, there was still a third of the season to go, oh, and fine, I feel like fine. there were still like two or three teams that could have easily caught up with them. So, Definitely. although they were top, I don't think they should have really been crowned champions. When well, so you tweeting sense. like congratulations on winning the cup, but oh. not really. Winning. Oh, we tweeted them a certificate of participation for winning. <laughs> 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 we tweeted them a certificate of participation. Congratulations for an 80% win rate <laughs> in the 2019 20 season. If you go back to the tweets, you can probably find it, but that was that was quite fun. Were you just sort of like, you're there, you played the Glasgow game, and then they're like, right, country shut, and we need to get you home before the, the, the airports close, etc.? No, it was like, it was kind of weird. I thought we were supposed to play one more game, actually. I think it might have been against Cheshire, funny enough. Mm. And I think. I think it might have been like Ben Mockford or something. I think he was the one that like, I think he was the first player to get COVID. Something like that. I just remember he didn't show up. They're like, yeah, they got a player that's sick. And then I don't think we ended up playing that game. And then like shortly after, yeah, coach said no practice, no nothing. So we're just kind of at the crib chilling. Yeah. Uh, Then, yeah, like I think like a, a week might have went by and players started wanting to know like, are we going home? Are we not going home? What's going on? coach kind of gave us like the option like if you want to go home like yeah go on like you can go home but like if you want to stay because the the league didn't make a decision yet yeah, yeah the league, I remember that. The, remember the league was late. It yeah, was very, very late yeah. in deciding what's going to happen. And all the other sports in the country had shut down. Mm-hmm. So technically, we were still supposed to be playing games. Mm-hmm. But the option was there for you guys to want to go home if you need, if you felt like you needed to. No. Which I think personally, like, it makes perfect sense to go home in that situation. Oh, yeah, we, I didn't. I didn't. I told. I talked to my parents and everybody, and like, we didn't know how serious it was. So I was going to just bunker down here in England. Uh, I think I stayed with Eric Lockett. Like, we stayed here for, like, an extra two or three days. Everybody else had went home. Gentry had went home. Uh, everybody else had went home. And then Coach just told us, like, okay, yeah, it's time for you guys to go. Yeah. I'll get out of here. Because you guys then had to get back, and literally, I think, a day later or something, the, the borders are closed. It was, it was something like that, I think. I, no, you're right. There was, like, an announcement over the internet. That they were going to close the borders. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what Coach said. Like, he didn't want to risk it. Yeah. Like, right, we need to get you back home with your families before these borders close. I remember that, actually. No. I love that team, by the way. That team with Jen Trey, he was jelly, one of you, just finishing she was everything. Nice. He yeah. was nice. I'm Fred Thomas. Yes. Marcus. Captain Dan. Yeah. 
No, I think it was nice. How far could have that team have gone, do you reckon? Because we were on I'm, some real I'm gonna be honest, form, we weren't we? We could have won, or we could have at least competed for at least three championships that year. Oh, well, we had the trophy. We do you remember we had the semifinals of the trophy, Solent, and then we lost to Solent? Solent yeah. did that to us. They killed you in the away no, they leg, killed, didn't they? they killed, I'm beyond, I think that might have been the first game without Fred. Yeah. And they came out like that first five minutes, and we just kind of looked around like, what's going on? Was that Elliot Sentence in that team? Yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. Elliot was on that team. Yeah. And they and they had, um, we were part of this the other day, weren't yeah. we? There was a guy called Ian something, Ian Smith? Yeah. Was he the guy that hit the about point, the point 10 guard. threes? The point guard. Yeah, small guy. He was going crazy that, I remember that. He yeah. and you watched the video of it, like it's in this tiny little gym, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Literally. it was. Yeah, yeah, small, yeah. And I'm saying tiny, well, knowing what SGS they is, they were in smaller than that. I think they won by like 20 points. Oh, mate, it's more than that. It was like 30 odd, because we won the second leg by about 20, and Shut we still up. lost. No, it was. No, it was, yeah. We think we got blown out like 35 or something like that, it was. It that's, was it was crazy. That's like, why we didn't go through. Yeah, because aggregate score, isn't it? So if, even if I think we won the second leg by like right. sixteen or seventeen. So if, even if we'd lost the first game by like fifteen, yeah, we still would have gone through. Yeah. And who who won the final? Did they not do the uh, final? They played Newcastle. The, 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 and this was the very very final game before COVID shut down. Now and it was the trophy final and it went to overtime. Newcastle Eagles versus Solent Kestrels. Do you remember that game? It was the last game before. I remember it so clearly because it was crazy. on TV. Uh, they, they were a very good team, that Solent team. Like they had, they were basically a, B, uh, a British basketball league team. <laughs> <laughs> that was close, wasn't it? Oh, that was close, wasn't it? Almost. But I mean, back then they would have been called that though. But they, they were, but they just didn't have the like what the funding or the. Or well, they the... just didn't have enough American. They signed uh, Trayvon Wright. Do you remember him from Leicester Riders to to basically fill an extra? They 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 bought in an extra American. They weren't allowed an extra American in Div One, but they could for the trophy. So they bought him in just for the no trophy games. Way. Yeah, yeah. And he was like an athletic sort of wing, like long mm -hmm. wing as well. So they were taking that very seriously. And then they came, we came in there thinking it was going to be an easy win and they just blew us out the gym. No, we did. We definitely did. Yeah. I but obviously it does mean that, you know, after that whole, you know, situation, the country shut down and then uh, you sort of had that whole, what was it? We had a year of lockdown, like a year and a half of lockdown. And then we saw you back again in the British Basketball League, yeah. but not from Flyers uh, uniform because you were back with Cheshire. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, uh, how did that happen? I was in, um, <laughs> how did that <laughs> how happen? How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. I was in, uh, I was in Turkey at the time and, uh, I was down there playing a little basketball. I wasn't signed with a team, but I was looking to get signed by a team for the upcoming season. And I got a call from an agent, Tom. Tom Politi gave me a call. Just asked, like, how would you feel about going to Cheshire? And he kind of just broke down, like, how it would be there as far as me playing and stuff like that. And I heard about the team we had or we would have on that team, and it didn't sound like a bad idea at all. Mm. I went ahead and signed there, and I... Yeah, play for Cheshire. It was yeah. weird seeing you in that colour, man. I'll tell you what was weird, though. I, I, we played against um, Cheshire that year, and I said hello to Levi, and he's wearing a Bristol Flyers backpack still. <laughs> 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 he was still wearing his Flyers yeah, backpack, was, wasn't he? Never forget. Yeah, was. Once a flyer, always a flyer, eh? Always, always. <laughs> so, uh, of course, you actually you guys actually won the trophy that year, the British Basketball League trophy. Yeah, we did. Larry Austin, of course, you had a little uh, fl a little reminiscence with him yeah, last yeah, weekend, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you, he was yeah. on your team. Um, that was, wait, was this two years ago? Yeah, so not last. So so Larry Austin's been in the league three years now. Yeah, two, I two, two is Cheshire, two, two one's Newcastle. Half. Yeah, he came like, Larry came like halfway through the year when we were, what was that, like maybe like November, late November, early December, something like that. Might have been right after we played Bristol, actually, that mm. now that I think about it. Yeah. Bristol kicked our butts. Yeah, home. we did. <laughs> they kicked our butts at home, and then like shortly after, yeah, Larry pulled up. What a player, by the way. Yeah, he's a great player. Yeah, yeah. If he, if he, if, if just his free throw percentage was a bit better, he would be unstoppable, wouldn't no, he? Yeah, he would be. Yeah, he'd be a great player. He's a troll. Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine. Does he talk a lot of uh, oh, smack? He, does he's he? such a troll. He, <laughs> he was my flatmate too. That's why. I, Hey Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Larry. I'm sure you love him, really. Oh, my God. Um, Levi, just real quickly. Um, of course, y your first spell was like three years ago or 2019. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you come back in. I know you've been here for like a couple of weeks now. But are you seeing differences in the way the clubs run? Are you seeing the team? Uh, you know, are you seeing the, the journey it's been on? Like, are things much better than they were in 2019? What's the main differences between your first spell with the Flyers and what you're experiencing now? Honestly, I, I can say there has been a lot of change, but the people are all the same. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like yeah. it's still the same 
What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think. Still of the same now. family feel, isn't Basically, it? Basically, yeah. But yeah. like just more high quality stuff now. Like mm -hmm. I said, this room, for instance, how the team is being managed as far as travel, flight, gear. Um, and like we're in Europe now playing. Yeah. So like that's the biggest thing. But yeah, it the team has come a long way when you think about it. But I don't I don't look like I don't look at it like that, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Of course you made your European debut I did. Uh, against Back and Bears uh, last week. Um how did you find it? How did you enjoy it? I wish we would have won, but it was a it was a great experience for me. Yeah. Uh I think like I said, we were the better team too. We just uh, when coach broke it down to us, I think we had like 17 turnovers and like 13 in the second quarter alone. Mm. Like that was the game right there. Yeah, it was a close game, wasn't it? What did you think, Sam? That bank three hurts oh, so yeah. much. Like, like it was the ugly. To be fair, I've said this to a few people. We came back from being 12 down with a minute and 20 to go. Yeah, Les hit a bank three, um, and he hit, a, he hit a nice one too. But he hit back, and I can imagine that's what they must have been feeling because he hit it, and it was in the last second of the shot clock, and it was from the top. He's a big man. He doesn't shoot ever, and it was ugly, and mm. it just slotted in, and he walked away with this arrogance. I was just like, you can't shoot a shot, and then oh. Oh, screw you, man. It, it was the most disgusting three I've seen. But like, the form as well wasn't looking great either. And, and, it was, like, and that made it a 10-point game. If it was a seven-point yeah. game, so they missed, we then yeah. went down and hit a three or a two or whatever. We're talking a five or four-point game. It is completely different. Oh, they would have cracked. I think we'd end up beating them. At, I think we would have. Yeah. 83-87, the final score. Uh, like you say, we actually were ahead for the majority of the we, game. Well, we were killing them at one point. Yeah, like, up by I, 10. Double figures in the second quarter. I was, was honestly like, like I don't want to sound arrogant, but I was like, this is the Bakken Bears. Like I like like I've heard about them since I probably before I even got to the pro stage. Like I've heard of them. Yeah. Just as far like who they are and how much they win and the type of European competitions that they play in. But I think as, after playing them, I realized like no, our team is just nice. Yeah. We are the Bristol Flyers. <laughs> We're just nice. That's it. We're just nice like that. There were some like I mean, Raf went four from four from three, yeah, which yeah. was tasty. Yeah. yeah. Um I mean also it's really uh, we'll come on to this, I'm sure, Joel, but it was the first time since the beginning of the season that every single we had every single available player. Yeah. No injuries. Full twelve man roster we had. It, first time since October twelfth or nineteenth, I think it was. I mean, arguably never because Christian, Christian was injured yeah. like the whole time, so yeah. which you never met Christian, did you? No, no. I never did. But but so realistically, it was like the first one, and then I mean we got a few injuries from that one as well, didn't we? So no, yeah, yeah. We, I'm gonna be honest, we jinxed it. Like we were in practice talking about it. Yo, this is the first time we got our whole team since October. No, oh. we need to be ready for tomorrow. And literally, I think after the game, no, I think after. I think Tijan got hurt after that. Yeah, because he, he didn't play Tijan the following weekend, did he? Yeah. And, and, and Les, Les as well. Les yeah. did. Les did too. Yeah. After that, I think Les like, yeah, my fault, y'all. Like, mm. I shouldn't have. Yeah. My bad. Well, it, it, I mean, we'll, we will get onto the injuries a bit later in our new segment because obviously the RGB news this week was um was dreadful as well. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so we'll, we'll cover that later on. Um, but uh. Obviously, you're talking about back and bears and flyers playing in Europe. And every time that uh, flyers do play in Europe, uh, Dan gets his package out, don't you, Dan? I do indeed, and uh, to much <laughs> applause as well. I hear <laughs> <laughs> he did. Why? Well, if you if you had um, watched the broadcast of this, you may have seen it. Actually, you wouldn't have seen it on the broadcast because it was just me. Because no. Gareth Till was ill. Gareth Ill. Gareth <laughs> <to> Ill. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just me doing the broadcast. We didn't actually do the full pregame show. But we ran it on social media. Um, and I think it would do Dan's package an injustice if we did not listen to it now. Uh, Levi, for the, for, you, you are new to the podcast. So uh, yeah. every time we play someone in Europe, uh, Dan puts together a nice little package, everything you need to know about our opponents. And uh, and Dan, you've done one for Back and Bears, haven't you? I have indeed. Yes. So uh, without further ado, I know it's a week late, but we'll get, we'll get his package out now on the podcast. Um, here is producer Dan's guide to uh, last week's European opponents, the Back and Bears. It's the Bears versus the Flyers in the ENBL. And no, we aren't talking about some inter-sport Bristol derby. This is another huge basketball game as we entertain Back and Bears from Denmark to the SGS. The 20-time Danish league champions have taken on the 16-hour drive to be here. So let's welcome our guests with the respect we always give our European opponents. Back and play in Aarhus, in the middle of Denmark. Flyers wear a navy vest. Keedy's back from a broken wrist. Coach can't sit still in his chair. Sorry, I, I couldn't help myself. Aarhus. 
the second biggest city in Denmark and the self-proclaimed city of smiles. Like Bristol, Aarhus has quite a bit of street art dotted around the city. You can take a rooftop tour for about 50 quid, which will show you all the best ones, but don't worry, I've picked out some of my favourites too. We've got this cool shark, a penguin, and a woman kissing a duck. <coughs> Moving on, if you like music, then may we point you in the direction of Aarhus' own Bertha Kier. She represented Denmark in Eurovision in 1989 with what some say is their best ever entry with painting the town red. Ah, oh, that's why she's wearing that. I'm not sure what the excuse is for those guys next to her. However, if you prefer your music less mainstream, then Spleen United also call this place home, and their electronic rock style might be more your taste. Finally then, a little on Back and Bears, and we've already mentioned their 20 titles, but what you might not know is they're three-time semi-finalists of the FIBA Europe Cup. 11-time winners of the Danish Cup too, Back and are proven winners, but this here town's only big enough for one set of bears, so it's time to put these boys back into hibernation. <laughs> Dan, you're such a weirdo. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yes, I am. I yeah, think I he's, uh, he's a bit ill. He's got the madness. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> Joel. Um, that is honestly, we, annoyingly, we're in the studio. We're not able to watch it at the same time. But like, if you are If you watch it on YouTube, you will see it. You will, I'll edit it in for the YouTube version. Yeah, but you should. If you're listening, you should go and find it and watch it because <laughs> it is so funny. Um, and that woman kissing a duck, brilliant picture. Yeah, It's I mean, weird, isn't it? I, it? They're very Bristol, though. I found at Aarhus. They, yep. they, they love their street art, but I don't think we've got any of a woman kissing a duck. I like that you're like, um, oh, you know, rooftop tour for about 50 quid. That sounds like a lot for it a rooftop a tour. Yeah, it is a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Levi, did you enjoy Dan's package? No, I did. I didn't know if that was an actual commercial or not. That was nice. <laughs> that was real nice. So uh, we do it for every European opponent. So, uh, so Dan, you're currently working on Svenborg Rabbits for yes, next week, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah, Svenborg Rabbits. Svenborg, I didn't realise it's not on the mainland of Denmark. So it's actually a little island oh, wow. next mm. to Denmark. There's a little taster for you for, for next week. There we go. Well, make sure you look out for that. Of course, Flyers taking on uh, Svenborg Rabbits. And you can watch it on YouTube next Wednesday. Uh, it's a 6 p.m. tip off, 5.30 p.m. the coverage starts. Myself and Gareth Till, hopefully a special guest, fingers crossed. Uh, and it should be a great game. And with, with us playing every game now, uh, apart from Svenborg, it's our last game, it makes Group A uh, very tasty indeed. I mean, we're 3-3 we're three and three right now, Sam. Well, if we win the next one, there is a good chance we'll go through. The, the next team below us that, um, that could match us is actually Lublin, but we beat them in the head-to-head, -head, so we would be above them, wouldn't we? Well, let's take a look yeah. at the standings. I think Drew Sedan can get them up on screen right now. Here's the Group A standings. Flyers currently in fourth, a record of three and three start Lublin right behind us they are two and three uh, they have two more games remaining but one of those is against Tartu who sit with a record of four and one uh, I think the way it works is if we win our last game against Svenborg, uh, that'll put us at four and three, which means that Start Lublin cannot catch us up in their last two games. Even if they tie with Flyers, because we beat them, had that massive performance Sam, out in Poland, uh, I think in the case of a tie, we would advance, because uh, top four advance to the playoffs. Um, so it, that that game against Poland, Sam, the one we did in the podcast, might be massive. Don't remember that, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> say, you were a bit drunk for that game, weren't you? No, Dan, what were you going to say, bud? I was going to say, you're asking Sam like he remembers any of what happened in Poland. <laughs> Levi, if you missed it, you can scroll back through the podcast to our podcast out in Poland, and yeah. Sam was really, really drunk during the whole thing, so it was a great podcast. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> interviewing coach while I had a few sideline um, beverageinos. Yeah, so. Fresh waters, indeed. London fresh waters were consumed. Um, should we take a look at Group B, producer Dan? Uh, here's the other group. Uh, Newcastle Eagles, uh, obviously the British Basketball League team competing in the competition. Uh, they are dead last in uh, Group B. They have two wins and two losses. However, uh, Valmira Glass are 0-7, so you'd expect by the end of the season them to overtake them. It's because you get a point, I think it is, for uh, playing a game. So you see they have seven points and seven losses. Um, top four, Voluntari, if we do advance to um, you know finish in fourth in in our group, fingers crossed. Uh, it would set up a tie against the first place team in this group. It's over two legs, so it's aggregate score. We love the aggregate score, don't we, Sam? Um, let's not. <laughs> let's not talk about that. Uh, and the winner of that aggregate goes through to the final four, which is held at a central location. So Voluntari in first right now, five and one. And then there's three other teams that have four wins, which is Dan. Now, I watched Voluntari. Yep. They're very good. 
I have to say. Not that, not that I think Flyers can give them a really good game, but they demolished Newcastle Eagles. Was it the, home or away? It was involuntary. Um, and yeah, they absolutely destroyed Newcastle Eagles. So a tough game if it is going to be them. This so, is going to make me sound like a massive loser, but the voluntary makes me sound uh, makes me think about Twilight. Is there like voluntary <laughs> siblings in that or something? I don't know. I, but hey, if check, you play them, the check voluntary. that for me, Dan. I need to hear from you. Okay. Hey, if he does get to them, I'll tell you what, that could be a great package. I'd be just angry. <laughs> <laughs> nice Romanian package. Oh, gosh. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, Levi, what would it mean for you? I know you've only played one European game so far for the club. What would it mean for you to be, you know, to play a part in helping Flyers, uh, you know, hold if we can hold on and reach the playoffs in our first season? What would that mean to you to help Flyers to the EMBL playoffs in just their first season playing European hoops? Uh, more history. Mm. Uh, I guess I was here when we we went to our first cup. Why not yeah. be here again for the next big big thing, which would be playing in the playoffs in the NBL. Yeah, it's been a great season, isn't it? You know, regardless of what happens, but um, you know, Sven Borg, it is gonna be a big game. So make yeah. sure you watch that one. Must win. And yeah, also must win, yeah. that we're playing against a team with um, arguably the best logo in the league. So yeah, they do have a great logo. You haven't checked have out. you seen it? The big no, bunny logo no, it looks great. <laughs> it is. A, it is a great logo. It is a great logo. Um, but uh, of course. Um, yeah, that, that defeat to Back and Bears. They actually lost their first game as well, by the way, in the um, competition um, last mm -hmm. week. And Svenborg got their first win of the competition. So they're coming into our game uh, off the back of a W. So, uh, yeah, go watch It Flyers YouTube channel on Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. coverage starts. 6 p.m. is the tip-off. Don't miss it. Uh, right, uh, Levi, it's time for us to get to our quick fire questions segment. And every guest we have on the podcast, we like to put them through a series of quick fire questions. You'll have as many as 30 seconds on the clock to answer as many questions as you can. Don't worry, the questions aren't too hard. Uh, the score to beat is 11. 11. Is it 11, Dan? It is 11, yeah. It is 11. It is 11. The score to beat is 11. Uh, Producer Dan, can we have the lights down low, please? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Levi, don't be nervous, mate. You've got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as you possibly can. Uh, Sam, are you ready? Ready as ever. Right, 30 seconds on the clock. Levi Bradley, your time starts now. What is your worst habit? Procrastination. What is your favorite thing to drink? Lemonade. What is your favorite social media app? Instagram. What was your last so uh, search on Google? Conversion rate for pounds. Do you sleep with your socks on? No. What's your go-to karaoke song? Isn't she lovely? Nice. Oh, I'll tell you what, give him a bonus point for that one because that was great. That was amazing. You actually full-on gave us a little bit of the uh, Stevie Wonder here on the podcast. Amazing stuff. Uh, isn't she lovely? That is a tune, by the way. I like that a lot. It is. Uh, Producer Dan, do you have a tally for us? I do. Tally? And with that bonus point at the end there, that's a seven. Seven. Okay, who got 11? Who go. got 11? Uh, who was it that got 11? Was Mike uh, Miller last Mike season? Mike Miller, yeah. yeah, yeah Mike we had a point guard, Mike Miller, last season. He got 11. He was rapid on those. We have, I think RGB got 10, didn't he? Was it RGB? Yeah. Well, so, we we did we failed to tell you that it really doesn't matter. You just got to make one up. So when you're like, what was your last search? You just be like, I don't know. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I, had, you, I had to actually think about it. Like, I, yeah. that's you don't have to ever give correct answers, Levi. You one. can just make it up on the spot. We don't really care. Okay. Uh, well, but, surely your last search was how to get here. Did you drive down? Yeah, I did. Yeah, there you go. Okay. How to get to Ashton <laughs> Gate. There I didn't we think go. About that. <laughs> uh, great stuff. Right, uh, Sam, uh, it's time for us to get to this week's news. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hey, Flyers fans. We want to say a huge thank you to our sponsors, WebGains, who helped make this podcast possible. WebGains is an affiliate marketing network who bring businesses and affiliates together to grow and succeed. The Bristol Flyers are all about teamwork and that's exactly what web gains are about too. They're like the assist that helps your business score big. Are you an aspiring entrepreneur or have a business of your own that sells products online? If so, WebGains is here to help. They connect businesses with top affiliates from cashback giants like Top Cashback to niche bloggers in your vertical who can promote your products and services reaching a wider audience and driving more revenue. 
And here's the slam dunk, Flyers fans. Web Games provides you with detailed reports and analytics to track the performance of your affiliate marketing campaigns, making it easy to see results of your hard work and investments. Whether you're a local business or an international brand, Web Games has the expertise and network to take your marketing efforts to the next level. They're passionate about helping businesses grow, just like we're passionate about our team's success, Sam. So if you're ready to skyrocket your online pro- presence and drive more sales, visit webgains.com and see how they can assist you in scoring big in the world of affiliate marketing. That's webgains.com, W-E-B-G-A-I-N-S.com. Give your business the assist it needs with Webgains Affiliate Network. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. <laughs> Levi, you were just saying that uh, you want to know who was doing the voice yeah, of the yeah, Bristol yeah. Flyers podcast. This it. one. You're listening to the... <laughs> This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Well, I can tell you that is none other than Ian Downs, who is uh, a, well, he's our match day presenter down here at Ashton Gate Stadium. Um, he does football and rugby games. Yeah. Uh, he used to work with you, just Dan, on Sam FM back in the day, or yeah. Jack FM, I should say. Indeed, I've known Downsy about 10 years now, so yeah. Long time. Shout out, Downsy. We appreciate yeah. you for putting together these amazing stings for Shout us here on the podcast. Shout out, Downsy. We should get on a podcast at some point. Should oh, wait. Do that? You already are on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> this is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, great stuff. Right. Uh, time for us to get to this week's news, Sam. And, uh, of course, the Flyers uh, had two games in the trophy last weekend. Of course, the trophy competition is officially underway now. Uh, the whole of January was dedicated to the trophy. Um, really big, really sad news at the uh the weekend uh with Roel Graham Bell is the game against Manchester wasn't it it was the fourth quarter Flyers were cruising yeah. at that point uh, it was our is a record breaking first half i know the game didn't mean anything but it was a record breaking first half Flyers scoring 68 points it was the highest ever um tally that the Flyers have been able to get on the board in a half um, you guys, I swear there's games this year or even in previous seasons where 68 has been the final number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That um, was, you guys were firing, weren't you? So it, it was, yeah. um, it was really great to see. And then all of a sudden, uh, everything changed in that fourth quarter, about eight minutes to go. Uh, Raul Graham Bell, a terrible injury. Um, I mean, we, it was, I, I don't know really where to start on this. Like, I, I was sat front row for this uh, and it, obviously game has stopped for 15 minutes and then, um, we've got to give a massive shout out to how quickly everyone was able to react as well. We can actually get RGB on the line because I know a lot of fans have been um, concerned. Uh, we put out an injury report update um, after the game. So, uh, you know, after the, the third quarter, or the fourth quarter, he was quickly rushed to hospital. He spent the night in Manchester. He was with um, Mike Eggins, shout out Mike, and obviously D- uh, our... Um, Club therapist Don Williams as well, who was really quick on the scene to attend to Ruel. And we're very pleased to say that Ruel Graham Bell joins us on the line right now. RGB, you're on the Bristol Flyers podcast. How's it going? Uh, It's going good, man. Um, Other than the flu that I currently have. Oh, you got the flu, have you? (laughs) It's literally the worst possible thing that could happen. I know, I know. Double whammy. Yeah. Double Wagwan, well, brother. Wagwan, well, got... brother. How you doing? <laughs> we got Levi Bradley here in the studio as well. He's our Come guest on. this week. <laughs> What's going on, bro? Um, I'm good, bro. Yeah. Uh, obviously. dead, isn't it? I mean, mate, you seem to be in really good spirits, mate. Of of course, after the the terrible injury um, in that Manchester game, we were just talking about it before yeah. we got you here on the line, but. Um, kind of just talk us through that whole process from your point of view you know what that's the calmest I think I've been to an injury I've had uh, like yeah that's I, like I can't explain how calm I was under that situation um, in the moment of the immediate incident my face was shock like very big shock because it was you know not in the right place but um, yeah I'd say straight after like I was pretty calm yeah yeah Obviously, the game had to stop for like 15 minutes and obviously everyone was making sure that you could, we, we could get you to the hospital as soon as we possibly could. Um, and, and, I mean, we, we were speaking about this off air, um, Ro, but like just how quickly Dom was to attend to you straight away. I mean, I was looking at my laptop. Mean, I looked up and Dom was active, like straight off the bench, just darting over to you. Uh, you got to give a massive shout out to him, right? Looking like Usain Bolt or Gatlin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
he, he jumped over that that little barrier thing. Like I was like, oh, this is. <laughs> I thought he was gonna hurt himself. I, I didn't know he had it in him like that. Jeez. But yeah, I appreciate what he did, man. He got there so quick, um, and he locked into like following procedure or whatever. Like uh, I was never worried. Yeah, no, honestly, I was never worried. Was it? Was, was it one of them where you couldn't feel the pain because it was so bad, or were you really in pain straight away? Um. I'll be honest, it felt like I rolled my ankle, but then I was like, wait, I can't do, like, normally, I, if I've ever rolled my ankle, you do a little t- rotation just to see what's going on, like, yeah. where it's hurting, and there was no rotation, I know it sounds grim, but yeah, there was no rotation, oh, uh, I have to laugh about it, I have to laugh about it. Soldier, um, soldier. Yeah, you are, mate. I think it's, I, it's it's so tough, man, because like we literally can't catch a break right now uh, with injuries, and and we were just talking about it as well. But like none of the injuries that we've had this season have been like over usage injuries. They've all been like landing, or they've all been like they've all been like freak accidents, haven't they? Yeah, it's it's stuff that you actually can't control. Um, that's just part of the game, man. Sometimes it's unfortunate, like it happens, you know. Uh, Roel, just talk to us about like um, sort of the process that happened after that whole situation. So obviously you were rushed to the hospital. You had your X-ray, you had your CT scan. Um, yeah. They pop your ankle back into place in the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that's horrible. I got, I got, got to the hospital um, off the gas. I, I, I got, I got raged because the gas ran out. Like that we brought, and I was like, I finished it, I finished it. <laughs> I was like, get me more. I was like, get me more. Like, I was calm up until then, you know? Oh, no. But the thing is, the staff were all just like, oh, like, don't worry, we understand. And I was even, I still apologised. I was like, look, I'm sorry if I was rude to any of you lot, but hurry the f*** up. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, they all understood, though. They all understood. They were like, look, if my foot was in this place, I'd be giving a lot worse than this. Like, okay. Yeah. No, I hear you, mate. I hear you. Um, obviously, you had, yeah, so. yeah, you had your scans and stuff, and it was really good news out of that. The best news it probably could be is that it was just a dislocation. It wasn't an actual ankle break, I suppose. Yeah, we're going for, I think I'll get an MRI scan on this one and it fully goes down. Um, I've done a CT and, MRI, a CT and X-ray, and uh, yeah, both, uh, good results apparently from what they've seen so far. Yeah. And I just have to wait for that final one. Yeah. Shout out the man upstairs. Shout out the yeah. man upstairs. Mm. I mean, it was um, and just the uh, a message, just a word on like the outpouring of messages that came through from some of the fans as well. I imagine your inbox uh, was pretty full after that game. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate all of it, honestly. Um, like it was a, like I don't know. I was, I, I you know, I was expecting a couple messages, but then the the, the the flow of them was like I mess. I replied to as many as I could. Mm. Um, went to sleep and then it's like they tripled and then I was like ah. <laughs> there was a lot of messages. <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. And I love. I appreciate every single one of them and I replied to all of them as well because you know um, I'm thankful for that and I'm thankful that you know it's not worse than it could have been. I was expecting the worst. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, uh, I didn't take that for granted. I was appreciative and I'm thankful. Yeah. Well, so so what's the process now? Are you you're back in Bristol now, I presume? Yeah, I'm back in Bristol. I don't know, but I'm not allowed to put weight on it. Um, I should be getting an appointment with Bristol Hospital tomorrow. They haven't called me yet. I don't know what's going on there. But um, yeah, that's literally it. That's, you know. And so I can get back in the gym as soon as possible because I can still do work on the upper body. You know what I'm saying? Still got a left leg. <laughs> Look at him getting back out of there and again, straight on Hurry it again. I love it. Get back to the gym, bro. Hurry up. I'm on. Hurry I'm up. I'm on. Get, get I'm the, on. Them arms are starting to look small, actually, bro. So you need to work again. Uh, yeah? but hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Let me get you on the program. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, mate, we appreciate you um, uh, dialing into the show uh, to give fans an update. Um, are you going to be making the game on Friday? Are you going to be watching from home? I'm 100%. I definitely will. Oh, yo, yo. I just remember, I do have a plate of food that I need to drop off to you later after this podcast, actually. Yeah, you better. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got you, brother. Yeah. I got you, brother. I got you. Well, Ro, yeah. well, Ro, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we will see you at the game on Friday. Um, and yeah. Levi Bradley will drop off uh, that plate of food to you as yeah. well. Yeah, for sure. No tampering with the food needs. Come on. <laughs>
uh, but uh, but Ro, we'll let you go, mate, and um, and make Very sure you rest good. up. All right, it's good to hear from Very you, good. and um, yeah, hopefully you get a, a a swift and speedy recovery. Yeah, man. Thank you. I just want to say thank you again to everyone who sent me messages and everything else. I appreciate that. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Ro. I'll uh, I'll catch uh, you later yeah. on. I'll speak to you later. All okay. Right, love my all boy. Right, See you, boy. All right, love. See you later. It's good to see he's in good spirits, isn't it? Because like it, that, that whole situation, like there's nothing you can do after that situation's happened, and you know it's just about recovering. And he's a great spirits right he's now. He's funny, isn't he? Yeah, he he is. I, I love Ron. I love Ron there. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a, a really tough situation. But hopefully, all the fans can catch up with him at the game on Friday. We'll take on uh, London Lions, and uh, and yeah, really great to hear from Rebel Graham Bell. Uh, just a quick one uh, still in the news section by the way uh, Newcastle Eagles let's talk about that a little bit uh, we had them on Friday night that was our Easy Jet sponsored game Sam uh, that was fun hey it was a fun game I know we didn't come out on top we lost by two in the end uh, but um, orange t-shirts on every single seat courtesy that of our fire. sponsor Easy Jet it that looked great fire. didn't it that was fire I like that it had like a bit of a sort of playoff kind of feel to it because like you know you, we kind of wanted to make the trophy feel a bit different this year for yeah. our home games and stuff like that it just sort of creates that sea of orange it's a bit different isn't it I liked it I like that whose idea was that uh, so, well we've done that previously in the playoffs last year uh, we did the pink didn't we last year but it was it was Easy Jets idea so they'd obviously come to the games last year and been mm -hmm. like oh I'd love to do the game we sponsor we'll get a load of t-shirts together and yeah. a few little stress balls they're throwing out as well yeah, yeah. kids going wild for that. that not just kids adults were going wild for it as well oh, so. mate, I was going absolutely nuts for them <laughs> <laughs> get a freebie it could be anything it could be the worst little thing ever but it's a freebie and we're all going to go nuts for it aren't free we free stuff so. is the best stuff in the world there we go There's it's nothing. always good to have free stuff um, <laughs> just a quick uh, just a quick look at uh, oh here's a bit of news that caught my eye actually Sam <laughs> you're right there Sam you <laughs> should you made me laugh so much because he's like, he just says free stuff. So you're like, free stuff is really good things that we need. Anyway, on to the <laughs> next thing. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the time, mate. We're I running know, on quite a bit in the podcast. <laughs> well, here's something that caught my eye, Sam, on social media over the festive period. And that is one of our club volunteers, Aaron Emer. Shout out, Aaron. He's a diehard Indiana Pacers fan. Uh, he's been over in the States through the festive period. He watched a total of eight Pacers games while he was out there and he was representing the Flyers too. I so, don't, it wasn't all Pacers. Some of them were the, um, the, were the he's watched some G League NFL, games, weren't yeah, they? He watched, he watched eight Pacers games, he watched G League games and he watched NFL games out there as well. So he's what been, been crazy pretty cat. nuts. Uh, get the first picture up on screen, Chris Dan, because uh, here's a picture of him repping the Flyers at the Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Uh, there's the Flyers t-shirt outside the uh, uh, home of the Indiana Pacers. Uh, let's get another picture up on screen, Dan, because here's the view from his seat. No way. Hey, that's, that's so good uh, at the Gamebridge Fieldhouse which is awesome if you're if you listening to the podcast uh, do check this out on YouTube essentially he's put his Flyers t-shirt on his seat and just taken a photo of it as well uh, but it wasn't just the home games that he went to because he also went with the he had a look at them away in Chicago there's the Flyers t-shirt next to the iconic MJ statue at the United Centre great to see that is so cool and uh, the last picture here producer Dan is a view from his seat at the Chicago, uh, at Chicago Bulls, which he's like literally in the first tier, probably second row back, I think it is, in that very lower bowl tier. Those so, seats look nice as well. He's lit right now. It, it, if you don't know Aaron, uh, he's obviously one of our club volunteers. Um, he is a diehard Pacers fan, and um, he goes out there, I think every year or every other year, just to go through a bunch of games. And the uh, he's got this, um, he's such a big fan of the Indiana Pacers that he had um, a, he's got a tattoo sleeve on his arm of um, everything Pacers and at the bottom it's like Reggie Miller doing the, the choke and then it goes up it's got like Jermaine O'Neal on it and it, it, it went because it, um, the Pacers media team picked up on it and they actually ran it on socials get this up on screen here producer Dan because uh, here it is here's his tattoo uh, it's got like shots of Jermaine O'Neal in there there's Aaron shout out Aaron oh, he went crazy the, yeah, yeah that's the and that's the official Pacers um, Instagram page as well that's Twitter, 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 yeah, Twitter page they, they run that on socials so that's got like 77,000 views uh, 1,000 likes um, on Instagram it had more on Instagram I think than that as well so. yeah I think you can run it on Instagram as well so that's, that's absolutely tough. crazy so Aaron was out there uh, representing the Flyers what um, a time to be a Pacers fan as well because Halliburton is nice right he also that's, just got Pascal Siak did it, you know him do I? Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're Scottison. You were, do you play together? Uh, no, no. He's I'm way older. Than oh, he's but, young. Yeah. But we played on the same. Be like the same academy team, basically. Is it? Cause he's from Wisconsin, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we we played for a team called Wisconsin United. So we were like, I think we were like 17. You and at that time, Reese might have been 
think they were like 14 you something like that really yeah but no yeah we used to travel around everywhere yeah that's a little bro he's cooking isn't oh. he he's a dog yeah is he a nice guy is he yeah. They also just got Pascal Siakam now, haven't they? That is a huge trade, I think. Huge for them. They're going to well, be so didn't they good. Sign him, did they sign him as a free agent? Oh, they trade no, for him. They traded no, loads for him. And then he, I think I've, I've seen in the media that he doesn't want to... I can't remember what it was. He doesn't want to sign for a team that's not the rap. I don't know. I, I think... I don't know. Ignore was me. Was he with the Raps when they won? Oh, no. I think that's with Sacramento. Oh, was uh, it? Yeah, okay. He, he said that if they traded him to Sacramento, he wouldn't re-sign with Sacramento after Oh, the year. I see. So then yeah. he traded him to... Indiana instead. Mm, nice. They can go far this season, I reckon. Now they got him. It'd be huge. Nothing on my team. Nothing on my boys. Tim Timberwolves killing it right now. Timberwolves. Yeah. Respectable. Yeah. <laughs> Very respectable. I mean, I, I for many years have been a lonely, lonely bottom of the league um, team. Whoa, 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 whoa! So were you with them when they were cheeks? Mate, me and me and Rubio go back years. That's why okay. I like them. Your long lost, right. bro your long lost right. brothers, basically. That, this that's time, why right. I like them from when Rubio was like eighteen right. or when he got drafted, and All that's right. why I went Real there. Real fan. There Real fan. Um, let's get back to our news because uh, other news around the league this week. Brad Green, Big Bad Brad, named in Team of the Week. Fourth Shout time this season that Brad's <laughs> earned a spot in the team of the week. Shout out, BG. Um, yeah, the big 25.13 rebound, double double, six offensive rebounds in the uh, 15, no, 25 point win on the road against Manchester last week. Massive game for Brad. What's it like doing that guy up in practice? Bro's an ox. <laughs> 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 like, it's, I don't know, it's weird. It's like he's, he's so strong, but at the same time, it's not. It's not like aggressive, but he still moves you out the way. Like sometimes I feel like there's nothing I can do. Like there's there's ah. nothing you can do with him sometimes, to yeah. be honest. If he's got position, you're screwed. Over. No, you're, you're done. If he's got position, if he's like within five feet of the bucket, you're toast. At that he point, just take the ball out and run down the floor. Yeah. Ah, uh, he's. I love having him on the team. He's amazing. Yeah, he's big. He's massive. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you haven't thought about voting Brad Green for your All Star starters, then you probably should. Which gets me on nicely to uh, <laughs> the British Basketball League All Star Game. Now, the British Basketball League All Star Game is right around the corner. The big game takes place at the Copper Box on March seventeenth in London, and All Star voting is now open. It's been open for about a week now, Sam. Uh, so fans can vote for who they want to see in the North and South All-Star starters. Uh, of course, both teams go head-to-head -head in an exhibition game featuring the best players in the British Basketball League. You can vote for your starters right now. Voting closes on February 15th, and you can vote by heading to the British Basketball League website right now to cast your vote with one player from each team making up the five, and then the coaches making up the, uh, picking the reserves for the rest of the team. So uh, I think Gareth Murray today was named the head coach for Team North. They're going to announce the head coach for Team, now, uh, team South uh, later this week, I believe. Nice. Um, uh, fans can vote once per email address, and uh, and the week uh, the week one voting has officially been uh, revealed by the British Basketball League. So voting's been going for the first week, and the league has revealed the the results so far. So producer Dan can get up on screen the North results so far, uh, and you see the Newcastle Eagles fans have come out in their force because uh, Jordan That's Johnson, crazy. Ricky McGill, all in the top four. In guard voting. Taj Green also leads the way in Darius forward Defoe voting. Darius down there too. What? Darius five? Defoe has 15% of the votes at the centre position. Wow. Um, so place. get behind your teams. Um, obviously, this is the results for the, the, the votes in the north. It's a three-horse race for that centre position right now. Just 2%, 3% separating the top three. Uh, and here's the stuff that all the Flyers fans need to get behind. Here is the voting for Team South so far and there's a certain Levi Bradley sitting That's third crazy. place right now in the forward position He's voting boy. with 16% of the votes Levi what do you reckon of that? I love my fans I, <laughs> I, I didn't honestly I didn't I ain't know I have fans here. <laughs> Levi's honest, played two are there two games, three games now? Three. Three, games, three now, games now. And he's already got sixteen percent of the vote and the four positions. That's crazy. For the a, a Cheshire Tevicky North or South? Cheshire and North, team so North. I reckon also you'll have people from yeah, Cheshire so, voting South. Uh, it has to be the Cheshire go. fans. Um so um also on that graphic, Brad Green uh, is second in voting at the centre position, just one percent behind Gabe Oliseni. So you can see just how much your votes matter. Brad better win. He better win. Do You're right. You, do you know what? What do we want, by the way? Do we want like a real tough fought battle? Or do we want highlights? Because if we want highlights, we need to get TJ on there. I, I personally, I think that TJ should be in All Star this year, but that's 
Well, I can tell you, actually, that because the league sent us the rest of the voting, Trajan Jacob is just outside the top three in the South in the guard position. Uh, he has 10% of the votes. Uh, Keely Johnson and Tevin Ollison are also uh, just outside the votes. They have, yeah, they have around, five, they have around 5% of the votes, but they could do with your help. So if you haven't voted already, go vote on the British Basketball League website. They are doing double vote days as well. So your vote counts double on particular days. Uh, and, and voting is, is so easy that we're going to show you how easy it is to vote for your all-star starters right now. Because, Producer Dan, uh, you are about to make your all-star selections, aren't you? They are already locked in, Joel. Get them up on they screen, Dan. They are locked Dan. in. Let's have a look. Here's Producer Dan's picks for the all-star game. Uh, if now, I'm... I might be called bias here with my <laughs> South team. <laughs> but, uh... I just peeped everybody. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, uh, for the listener, uh, Dan's That's all-star crazy. South starters include Trajan Jacob, Tevin Ollison, uh, Raphael Thomas Edwards, Brad Green, and our very own Levi Bradley right here. <laughs> <laughs> Good selection there, Dan. Yeah. Um, talk, yep. us, talk us through your North Five, Dan. So my North Five are, well, obviously you want to get a former flyer in there as well. So I've got Adele Pesh, <laughs> obviously. Oh, um, after that, I, I've, I've looked at some of the stats. Um, and yeah, I've gone Jordan Johnson, Jamel Anderson, Patrick Whelan, and Maceo Jack. That's a tough team. That's, that's a, a good that's team. Solid. That's good. Oh, it's picks. a tough team. Um, picks. Yeah, great. It's a great five there. I love that Flyers five, by the way. All five of those should be uh, yep. the South All Stars. Uh, don't forget, you can actually vote all Flyers five, just like producer Dan right here. Uh, Dan, you're going to lock in your votes uh, right now. You hit that confirm your selection button. You're going to have to fill in all your details, put your email, your first name, your last number, and your phone number in there. And you also have a chance to win a signed All Star jersey if you do so as well. Come on, Dan. Write your first name, producer. <laughs> Second first name. name Last name Dan. <laughs> Can we get producer Dan an official flyers email? Producer Dan at bristolflyers.co.uk. What, and everyone just sends their spam messages over <laughs> yeah. to him? That'd be great, wouldn't it? No <laughs> abuse, please. And no signing me up for anything <laughs> either. <laughs> signing me up to dodgy websites like the Plymouth Patriots website. Yeah, that, is it, <laughs> that, is a, that is a dodgy website to anyone, isn't it? Good. Very good. There we go. So that's your all-star voting. Go to the British Basketball League website right now and have your say in who makes the five for Keem South. Uh, right, final bit of news I've got for you, Sam. And this one's a biggie. Uh, I've got to give a massive shout out to the Flyers under 16s who have made it to the National Cup final this weekend in Manchester. That is insane. Christian has done such a good job with that team. Shout um, out C. Hill. Is he a legend? He more than a legend. He is the head coach for the... Um, under 16s and of course we've actually had christian hill on the podcast in the past and i'm very pleased to say that christian hill joins us on the line right now christian how we doing how you doing joel good to, good to uh speak to you man it's all good. good got i've got i've got sam here next to me i've got levi bradley what's going on big guy what's going on you got the boys in how are we doing? doing you all right i'm doing good how you doing man Good, man. Good. Not too bad. Not too bad. You all good? Yeah, I'm just waiting for you to see you in that championship game. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we'll do our best, man. We'll do our best. We'll do our best, definitely. Obviously, Christian, we are talking right now about the Flyers under 16s. It's a massive 20-point dub against Surrey Rams in the semi-final to book your place in the uh, the final, which is this Saturday. Um, talk to us about that semi-final performance, because that is an emphatic win. Yeah, do you know what? It was uh, like I said. I've been speaking to some of the some of the guys uh, just about it. I mean, we we didn't actually play great, um, and I know we got a twenty point win. Um, it kind of looked. A li- I mean, it's a little bit closer than than that. But um, yeah, we 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 could have done uh, things a lot better. Um, execution, you know, it's like on both ends of the floor. Sometimes things aren't working. But yeah, the, the boys just sort of. Um, the boys did really, really well. At the end of the day, it was a big uh, crowd-wise, uh, um, something they're probably not used to. Um, lots of things that were new. Um, cup semi-final, lot on the line. So, yeah, they, they, the boys did amazing. So, really, I, I put it all, all back on the boys. They 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 came through it, and uh, they, they did us proud. So, that was really good. Yeah, it was a massive achievement. And, and just tell us through, sort of like, Talk us through what what does it mean for for you and and all the junior players? Well, not not just the under sixteens, but the whole junior program. Just talk us through how how what it means for the under sixteens to be playing in this national final. Yeah, do, no, do you know what, Joel? It's it's kind of um, it, we we haven't been in a in anything sort of like this, I suppose, for a little while. Um, or you know, I don't know in in the sort of program history. I know 
I know Chris and uh, Corey Samuel's team and AJ's team got to a um, like a um, a final um, up in Manchester, and that was a long kind of it feels like a long time ago. Um, it mean it means everything I think for, for us as a club. I think um, sometimes um, we you know we, we sort of um, you know it's all about player development and and you know we've always been all about that, but um, it's actually nice some uh, 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 you know a certain period of time to to actually get some wins on the board and, and kind of look to win something. And I think um, this year has been that opportunity for us. We've got a, a group of players that are, um, that are really good, very versatile team. Um, obviously got some, some guards that can really score, um, which is, which is very helpful uh, when you're coaching them. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it, it means everything. And like I said to you, it's not just for, for us, um, you know, it's for everyone in the junior program, and it's nice to put Bristol on the map a little bit, really. Yeah, I know Levi. You were um, a, a big group of the whole. You talk about the the attendance of players. I mean, a whole group of players from the first team, the British Basketball League team, have come mm-hmm. down to watch the under 16s It just sort of sh- shows that real tight knit spirit of the oh, family, of the club. Family, you know, Flyers family, family. family. To be honest with you, that was a, that was one of the the biggest things to take away from 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 the day for me was the amazing support from everybody. It wasn't, you know, not just the, the BBL guys, but I mean, it's just a, a massive kind of thing for the, for the children. I keep, I keep, I keep going back to the kids cause you know, it is about them. And the, the big thing for me was, you know, having Levi and the guys there like to support them was kind of, you know, they're there every week supporting like the BBL team, mm-hmm. but to have it the other way around, that's kind of like, you know, means everything to me and it means everything to, to the boys. And I think that was, um, that, you know, it was just an awesome a- atmosphere and, and just a, a kind of really nice thing for the guys to do to make that effort to come down and, and support us. I thought it was amazing. I mean, just not not only just the, those guys, but like ex-Flyers, you know, Greg Street, mm. um, ex-Captain, um, you know, you had, to- you know, Tony, you had you know, loads of different guys there um, from sort of, you know, past, uh, past and present. And I thought it was just an amazing turnout and it was... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know I was nervous. I know I was concentrating on the game, but um, I can imagine how the players felt, you know, when you're 15, 16, um, you know, uh, they, they did really, really well. Yeah, and and just a quick word on the, the final this weekend. It's on Saturday uh, up at the National Basketball Performance Centre. Do you know what time? What time's tip-off? I didn't see a tip-off time on that graphic. Yeah, it's, what, it's, what, it's one fifteen tip-off. Um, and, and like I said, um, we're going up on, on the Friday uh, Friday afternoon, Friday evening, um, getting up there. Obviously, we can get some food, uh, get stopped, get in the hotel, relax. And, and basically, yeah, I mean, I know Manchester Magic are a great um, a great club. So um, they, they've won, I think, 12 under-16 junior titles or whatever it is, national cups or whatever it is. They're, they're a formidable force. And, and like I said, for, for us to, to get there is a, an achievement, but we want to go one step further now and we want to kind of, you know, put our sort of stamp on the game and we want to try try our best to to win it. You know, we're not there to just, you know, be part of it. We wanna we wanna we wanna win it. Um however I know that you know the, the, the task is tough. I mean it's in Manchester against the Manchester team. Um I think that just kinda of adds fuel to the fire for us. So it's kinda like go, you know coach. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. go get the dog. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go Under get the championship. Yeah, exactly. Underdog mentality is kinda of like, you know, let's just um Let's go for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really looking forward to it. And, and like I said to you, I just want the, the boys to have the best experience. And uh, the best experience for me, and I think the boys is going to be winning it. So let's, let's try and go do that, right? Yeah, exactly. You, you'd have the whole Flyers family behind you, um, supporting you along the way as well. And, um, and just a quick word, is it, it's being live streamed. Am I right in thinking it's being live streamed? <laughs> That's right. It's live stream on the YouTube, the, the Basketball England YouTube. I mean, um, the link I think is going around at the moment on the on the uh, socials and stuff, Joel. So I'll I'll kind of share that with you so everyone can uh, can tune in if you know if, if if you know if they're not coming up, then it'd be it'd be great if we get your support through uh, through that. And uh, like I said, we're just really looking forward to it. We want to we want to make Bristol proud, like the you know like the Flyers BBL team do, um, and we just want to. We just want to represent ourselves in the best way we can. Yeah, 100%. Send me that link, Christian. I'll make sure that goes out uh, ahead of time, ahead of the game. Get as many fans as we can watching the game. And uh, yeah, best of luck for the game. We'll all be behind you. Hey, listen, guys, appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your time, Joel. And uh, thanks, Levi. 
And, and thanks to my main uh, rival man there, sat next to you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Big love, you my man. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Big love. You, you, mate, go kill it. We're really excited for you. We'll be supporting you from the screen. Don't you worry. Yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. Like I said, you, you know, just um, just having this platform and, and being able to put the under-16s in the, in the limelight for a little bit is amazing. So, like I said, and the junior program as a whole. So, thank you very, very much. You're more than welcome. Best of luck with your game uh, on Saturday. We'll all be supporting you, mate, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon, all right? Thanks a lot, fellas. Take care. Thanks, Bye-bye. Christian. Bye-bye. See you later. See you big Bye-bye. 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 Amazing. Best of luck to those under 16s. It'll be a huge game for them uh, in Manchester on Saturday, 1.15 p.m. tip off. And you can watch that over on the Basketball England YouTube channel. We'll make sure we share a link with that over at Bristol Flyers on all major platforms. Uh, right, Sam, that's our news, long news segment. Let's wrap up with the mailbag. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. This has been a long old episode, Jolie. I know we took three weeks off, but so we've got to treat you with a bit of a longer episode this week. So you little lucky ducks. <laughs> we are back for a longer episode. But right, Levi, we round up every week on the podcast with the mailbag. We ask fans to send questions in to you. Uh, we've had a few questions come in. Uh, the first one is from Matt Hardy from the British Basketball League Daily. Not making that mistake again nice uh he says do you have any personal goals you want to achieve by the end of the season does a championship count as a personal goal or does it since it's a team thing is that a nah team i need we need any personal from you do you have any personal ones or are you all about the team levi well i feel like if you're all about the team in the end everything gonna work out for itself there we go that's a great political politically correct answer right there levi Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> uh another question uh certain marcus delpesh has been in touch shout out marcus i don't uh, want to answer his question he says how does it feel to be a goat oh my <laughs> <laughs> i can't say what i want to say on camera marcus but just know <laughs> Uh, do we play Sheffield one more time before the end of the season? I don't know if we do. do you we? might. I don't know. You might get to play against Sheffield again. I don't know. Yeah. We, do. I I think, haven't, yeah. we think we play him one more time, maybe. He does ask how much hay does a goat of your stature consume <laughs> yeah. per <Yo>. day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says as well. He sent that question into us. I don't know, Mark. Um, well, what's your diet like? <laughs> <laughs> Pure Ooh. protein, that boy. Look at his arms. Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, Sam, you got the next question? Yep. So Elite Performance on Instagram wants to know, Nate, who is Nate. your favorite trainer? Nate Wickman. If you don't know him, Google him. Elite One Performance. Is that your trainer out in Wisconsin? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a question come through from uh, Schnackman Matt. Uh, long story, but he's a member of our podcast team now. Uh, he wants to know, uh, what's your favorite snack? My favorite snack? Yeah, boy. Probably some candy of some sort. Some kind yeah. of candy. Something. I'm a sweet man as well, mate. Oh, yeah. I'm a sweet man. JP3 on Instagram wants to know, what's the most number of points you've ever had in a game? Like here in the BBL? Uh, I guess just any, any in your game. career, I suppose. Any in your pro career. Or or maybe even co- let's go back to college as well. College and pros. College. Uh, the best game I had in college, I think I had 30 points, but it was like 14 for 14. So I'm like, okay. I'm efficient Ooh. 30 points. Yeah, I, I like, like it. I like tie the school. <laughs> Two and <record>. ones. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But no, that was probably the that was probably the best game I think I've had. Yeah. Uh, what about the pros? Pro. Wow. Um I remember you having a massive game in a, a trophy semi final. I was gonna say that, that or cup semi final. Trophy. Uh, trophy. was it the against Glasgow? Uh, oh, with the, for, for Cheshire? Yeah, that might... Oh. That, that, or there was uh, there was a game against London City Royals, I think, in January. Yeah, the guy that's to a chip. Yeah, it and you did. had and you had a massive... I think it was against... Off the bench. Was it then? Yeah, oh, you had like 30 off the bench or something like that. Or was yeah. it 28 off the bench? It was like 20, 26 28. or 28. Something like, something like yeah. that. I remember oh, one of those games. I remember that. That's yeah, why he's dude. about the team, Joe. He doesn't remember the personal accolades. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the personal accolades. <laughs> All about the team, mate. I love it. Uh, last question. Um, Steve Young on X or Twitter... Could you get the Americans talking some Bristolian, please? Uh, Levi, do you know any Bristolian? You've been chatting to Corey Samuels a lot. Does he say, <laughs> lot, does he say a lot of uh, Bristolian, Bristolian phrases? Uh, I'm trying to think of some no? stuff what he says. Or about RKE or Cheers Drive or anything like that? You get me, bruv. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's not quite Bristolian. <laughs> that's Corey Samuels. That's Corey, That is Corey, that's Corey, big. That's Corey. That's something he'd say or... 
At some point, we will have to do some Bristolian lessons with our players. I don't like Bristolian, so is, yeah. I don't want you to learn it. It is very thick. Gertlash. Bruce Dan, you got some Bristolian at your sleeve, haven't you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for real core, it would be, here, have a look at my vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a Corey, really, isn't it? <laughs> that literally yeah, it is. is what uh, Corey Here, a boy's a money maker. <laughs> Next time you get off the bus for an away game, mm -hmm. go to the driver and go, cheers, drive. <laughs> that's, 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 that's Bristol. That is Bristol Cheers, for you. drive. How do yeah. you know again? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Cheers, cheers, drive. Cheers, drive. <laughs> cheers, drive. Uh, and on that note, we have to say cheers, drive to all you listeners at home because that is the end of uh, this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, Levi, thank you so much for joining us uh, I appreciate we appreciate, you. We appreciate you. you coming in uh, I know you've been super busy with your all schedule yeah. uh, for this week so best of luck for the game against London on Friday and also best of luck for the game out in Denmark next week against Svenborg Rabbits as I well I appreciate it we're going to need all the support thank you thank you thank you don't forget you can watch that game on YouTube Svenborg Rabbits versus Bristol Flyers you over there go watch it make sure you tune in to uh, that we'll be broadcasting that and our podcast Sam I think will return on Thursday Will. I think we're going to do a feature on the Danish trip. So watch this space. We've got our production meeting off air. Figure out what we're going to do for next week's show because we've got the players available. Uh, but uh, we and Dan's going to get his package out again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Give so it that, a good airing. There we go. Get your package some good airtime. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, massive shout out to our sponsors over at Web Games for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, thanks to Sam for joining me and Dan for pushing the buttons as always. And thanks for you listening at home. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. All those podcasty things that podcast hosts tell you to do but until then we will see you next week right here on the bristol flyers podcast